This video is gonna be your ultimate guide to learning everything you need to know about a quadriceps tear, just like the one that DeMarcus Cousins suffered recently in the NBA playoffs. What's up everybody, welcome back. For those new, my name is Brian and I'm a doctor and a sports fan and it's my goal here to combine those two interests to explain different sports injuries and sports medicine topics in a way that's easier for you guys to actually learn from and understand. I'm sure you've seen the news by now, you've probably seen the footage and maybe even we're watching live when this happened, but the official word that we have from the Warriors is that DeMarcus Cousins suffered a quadriceps tear on that left leg and is out indefinitely. So far, it sounds like they don't think he'll need surgery. The initial plan is to kind of reassess after a couple of weeks of rehab. So hopefully he's at least avoided surgery, but definitely has a quad tear. Now we see injuries like this before with the patellar tendon, with the quadriceps tendon, with the quadriceps muscle. So in the video, we're gonna first break down the basic anatomy that you need to understand before we look at the injury footage. We'll then take a look at the footage to explain the mechanism of these muscles involved and how this could have happened during that play. And then we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the unique muscles of the quadriceps that make this specific injury a little bit more complex than just seeing a simple quad tear. But don't worry, I know you guys can handle it. You've been with me for a lot of these videos understanding the anatomy. And so this is a good little step to take a closer look at what's going on. Hit that subscribe button if you like these videos and want to see more and let's get going. As you all know by now, quadriceps, there's four muscles. So the deepest one is the vastus intermedius. On the outside, we have the vastus lateralis. The inside is the vastus medius. And then overlying the top is the rectus femoris. The rectus is unique because unlike the first three, it actually spans across two joints. So it actually spans both the hip joint and the knee joint, so it also serves as a hip flexor, not just a knee extensor like the rest of the quads. We'll get into some more intricacies of the anatomy later on when we talk about his specific injury, but let's get to the footage to explain what might have happened here. We see him take off trying to chase down this loose ball after a deflected pass. As he's coming to the ground, keep in mind it's the left leg that was injured. His knee here is in a flexed position and the hip is also flexed. This looks similar to what happened with Victor Oladipo in terms of when he was coming down, his knee was flexed trying to carry all that load. But the difference here is that it looks like Cousin's knee actually makes contact with the ground during the fall. Usually when the quadriceps muscles get torn, they're trying to contract against some sort of resistance or they're being stretched beyond their means. As he's landing, that quadriceps muscle is trying to fire to stabilize the knee, but then when that knee makes contact with the ground, it provides some additional resistance that stresses that muscle a little bit more. A lot of people are saying that he has a quad rupture and they're throwing out things like quad tendon rupture. That's not at all the case of what's going on here. For someone to say quadriceps tendon rupture, that really implies that the whole tendon has completely ruptured and torn. That's what happened with Victor Oladipo, and you can go check out the video I did on him here to learn more about that. But in the case of a full quad tendon rupture, you aren't able to extend your knee at all or bear any weight. Right after this play, we can see Cousins is able to push himself up on his own with just a little bit of help, and then was able to walk off the floor. So he clearly has an intact, what we would call extensor mechanism, meaning that part of that tendon at least is still intact. So it's not completely ruptured like was the case with Oladipo. Okay, so if it's not a complete quadriceps tendon rupture, then what is it? In general, of those four muscles that I listed in the beginning, the rectus femoris is the one that's most commonly injured with a quadriceps strain. There's a handful of reasons for this. The first one is that it spans two joints, like I said in the beginning. The second is that that rectus femoris is made up of a lot of type two or the fast twitch fibers. And so it's responsible for more quick, fast contraction, subjecting it to more load. And the third aspect, and what we'll talk about next with the anatomy, is the complex structure of the rectus femoris. Now looking at some additional footage here, I think this rectus femoris is probably the specific quad muscle that was involved. There was some clips of him walking through the locker room and you can see as he's trying to contract those knee flexors, there's kind of that divot or that loss of kind of muscle bulk right in the middle of the leg and that's where that rectus femoris lies. So based on the idea that it's the one most commonly injured and this footage, we can talk more specifically about the rectus femoris and how it can be involved with strain. If we look more closely here at the origin of the rectus femoris up at the hip, we can see that there's actually two distinct origin tendons that make up this muscle. You can sort of think of the rectus femoris as a tube of a muscle with another muscle surrounding it. So of these two tendons that originate off the hip here, 
One of them eventually continues on basically deep inside the muscle bulk of that tendon and has fibers that originate off of it. It's then surrounded by muscle fibers from that second tendon, and this is why the anatomy of the rectus femoris is so unique and interesting when it comes to a quad tear like this. There's multiple different areas in the muscle that can have a tear or a strain, and so let's touch on those. The first and by far the most common spot that these muscles can be strained is right at the junction between the muscle and that tendon. In particular with the rectus femoris, that deep central tendon is the one that's most susceptible and most commonly seen to be strained or torn. Another possibility is that the junction between the fascia, which is that lining of the muscle, and the muscle itself can be damaged. Another especially unique type of injury is where that central muscle around that middle tendon can actually sort of deglove or basically pull through that outer covering. It's not a disruption between the muscle fibers and the tendon, but rather disruption between the muscles of that inner tube and that outer layer that get disrupted and cause that inner portion to basically retract up towards the body. And then the final one is of course we can see injuries to that part of the quadriceps tendon where the rectus femoris attaches. Another interesting bit of the anatomy here is that that quadriceps complex has those four tendons that have to come together to form the quadriceps tendon. And they don't all just kind of blend in together nice and symmetrically, they kind of layer out into different specific portions. As you can see on this image here, the actual top part of the tendon or the superficial part of the tendon is that rectus femoris. The very bottom layer is part of the vastus intermedius, which is that really deep muscle. And then the main components of the outside of the tendon are the vastus lateralis. The medial one comes down and inserts a little bit higher up, but it's mainly those three that kind of layer into those three different layers and combine as they feed in to attach on the patella. So it certainly is possible to have an isolated rupture of one of these muscles kind of right at that junction between the muscle and where it builds into the quadriceps tendon. Looking back at this picture though, when he's walking off, A, the fact that he still is able to extend his knee means that at least a majority of the tendon is still intact. The second thing is you can almost see the muscle bulk on the other sides, which would be the lateralis and the medialis, implying that those two components of the tendon are still intact. Again, it's possible that that rectus femoris tendon kind of severed right at where it goes to the quadriceps tendon, but it would be less common in terms of the overall cause of quadriceps strains. People would say, well, you can see this divot, so clearly that means it ruptured there and then got pulled up. Not necessarily. Some of these other ones, particularly involving that central tendon or central cord, can also give that same appearance where the muscle kind of gets balled up and spasms and then you have this defect down below. So the truth is we don't know 100% just from looking at footage or looking at the mechanism to know where exactly in that muscle his tear occurred. Either way, it's really good news that they're not planning for surgery, which implies that it's a less severe tear. It sounds like they're gonna do basically two weeks of conservative rehab and then reevaluate things and so what they're gonna be doing is an initial acute phase of a couple of days of just strict rest. During this phase, they're gonna be trying to put some compression to prevent any more bleeding inside that tear. They're gonna be icing it, elevating it, kind of your standard therapy to try to calm down that acute injury phase. After those first couple of days, then you move on to the more active phase of rehab where you're trying to regain your range of motion, your strength and your function. With a tear like this, there is disruption in the muscles or the tendon fibers and you get initial kind of bleeding in that area. What happens over time as this heals is that area tends to scar down to reform that connection, and then you get remodeling of that scar tissue or what we would call granulation tissue. That muscle is never the exact same. You don't get pristine muscle back like you did beforehand. You instead have this scarred up area that tries to bridge that gap so that you can still get function in the muscle, but not the exact same appearance and structure of the muscle. Now, there's no real good hard and fast data about how long it takes to recover from an injury like this, and it's also hard to predict because even the Warriors have said they don't really know the full extent of the injury, or at least haven't made it public. There was one study linked below that looked at 25 professional Australian rules football players that had specifically a rectus femoris strain. And in that group, the average return to play was between about 10 and 25 days. They didn't have as severe of injuries though, and so it's not entirely applicable to this situation. But one thing that we can pull out of this is that the players who had an injury to that central tendon that I talked about that runs down the middle of the muscle 
had almost three times the recovery period as compared to those who did not. So either way, regardless of how severe it is, if this injury does involve that central tendon going down the middle of the rectus femoris, then it's likely going to be a longer recovery and a longer rehab. But again, the fact that they're not rushing him off to surgery is reassuring. They're giving this a chance to heal just conservatively with therapy, and so that's overall good for his prognosis. Okay, so like I said, a little bit deeper dive into the anatomy, but this is interesting. This is very applicable to this type of injury. We need to understand this anatomy because it matters in terms of what the specific type of muscle strain or tear is. Again, don't call this a quad tendon rupture, and I wouldn't even call it a quadriceps rupture. Rupture implies that the tendon has been torn. The more appropriate term is what they're saying in the press releases, a quadriceps tear or a quadriceps strain. That implies more that it's the muscle involved as opposed to just the tendon that's torn in half and gives a better idea of what's likely going on. That's it, thanks for watching the video, you all. I hope you learned a little bit more about your anatomy, covered some new stuff that we haven't talked about before. The Warriors are projected to advance pretty far in the tournament, and so who knows, maybe a couple weeks from now we'll get an update where we've learned more about how he's doing or he'll have a setback and maybe need some more treatment. Either way, stay tuned here to hear more about what's going on. And until next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye.